And I'm still waiting for time. And there we go. Hi, everyone. This is Margaret Hirsch, your time with Hirsch's. And glad you all remembered our nine o'clock slot this morning. We changed from 11 back to nine because I'm back in sunny South Africa. Yeah, she, she says when she got up this morning and left home, it was three degrees in Joburg. But it's, it's wonderful to be back. Wonderful to be back with all of you. And wonderful not to have to get up at half past three in the morning to speak to you. So, um, yes, things are really going. And I'm in my Samson store, in, uh, in Samsung Samson store today. It is one of the top Samsung stores in the world. And I'm very proud today. I'm a very proud mother because my son is speaking in Singapore to all the YPO um, executive about what we do at Hirsch's and how we do it. And it's a two day lecture. Imagine, I mean, I battle with a 20 minute talk. Imagine lecturing for two days solid. That's going to be something else. But wow. um, you know, so Richard's in Singapore today. Lucy's with all her kids in Durban. And I'm up here in Joburg. So Hirsch's is still going strong. 24 shops open today. And we are ready to. <sighs> to be there and to serve you. But today we're talking about something completely different. So we're very, very happy, first of all, to have Jess and Stacey from Connectable Life, who will connect you to anybody who will help you with any problem that you have. So you know there's somebody who knows exactly what you're going through, exactly what you need, and that person is there to help you. But today we're very blessed to have Pia coming to us from the Mams and Toti, and she's going to talk <laughs> you. about skin. And the skin yes. is the biggest organ in the body and the most important important organ in the body. So Stacey's going to come in and Stacey introduce Pia to us. Thanks so much, Margaret, and thank you for that lovely introduction. You are so right. Um, we can find any help we need at any time we need it. So if you are looking, please, we are here to help you. And um, thank you so much, Pia, for joining us. We are so excited to hear what you have to share and teach us on our uh, the care of our skin. Um, Pia is a national and international somatologist and dermal therapist. She studied to be a paramedical skin therapist and her passion is the skin. She also studied cosmetic science, facial electrics, body electrics, and not anatomy and physiology, massage therapy, and spa management. Um, 17 years ago, Pia studied to teach beauty by qualifying as a facilitator, assessor, and moderator. She ran a successful beauty clinic with, uh, she still runs a successful beauty clinic with 10 staff, but she actually used to own a beauty school and um, ran that for many, many years with lots of students coming through. It was incredible. With her current spa and skincare clinic, she sees hundreds, if not thousands of um, clients a month. So thank you so much, Pia. I know that your passion is the skin and you have mm -hmm. such incredible knowledge of it. So I can't wait to hear what you have to say. Thank you, Stacey, and thank you so much, ladies, for having me this morning. Um, so where would you like me to start? Start with us, because here we are all wrinkled and, and burnt from the sun, and we've got, you know, we, as South Africans, we go into the sun, we know we shouldn't, and we get all sorts of things coming. And then, of course, these damn wrinkles keep coming back, you know, no matter what you do, there they are again. So tell us how we can make our skin look the way we want it to look. Okay, so Margaret, first of all, you have lovely skin and so do you, Jess, and so do you, Stacey. So anyway, but um, at the end of the day, when I look at skin, I look at skin from a holistic point of view. So we start with, um, first of all, what we eat. Nutrition is crucial for a healthy skin. So that means you need to make sure that you eat a rainbow of fruits and vegetables on a daily basis because the nutrients from your food is what gets to your cells. Not only your skin, your skin's just part of your body, it's one organ, but to every single organ of the body. Our cells, including our liver, kidney, heart, you name it, our cells turn over every single month. So it's imperative that your skin gets good food. Hydration is obviously key. But a lot of people ask me, I drink so much water, I don't understand why my skin is so dehydrated or even dry. I'm drinking so much water. So not all the water that you're drinking gets to your skin. It goes to every organ, blood, and every single area of the body. So what happens as we get older, our skin's ability to hold water slows down and our skins naturally dry out so I say to my clients what happens and it's a terrible saying but it's the truth is that we go from grapes to raisins 
and we want to regrape our skin as we get older. So that's basically what we're trying to do. And another thing I like to educate my clients on one thing, it's not about anti-aging. We cannot become obsessed with aging. Aging, we are all going to age. We cannot stop the aging process. So let's rather focus on skin health. Let's get our skin as healthy as it possibly can be and stop premature aging because that is something we can stop and if you already have sun damage and wrinkles and damaged skin that can be reversed but it's obviously a process because your skin is an organ everyone thinks oh but I've got pigmentation I want to get rid of it today well the pigmentation took 30 years to get there so we're not going to get rid of it instantly there are instant things that we do love of course and it's Botox and fillers. And yes, you know, if you can afford it, awesome, go for it. And those are instant, but those are not going to affect the quality of your skin. Do you have any questions? <laughs> no, we all get that odd pimple. And of course, I can't leave a pimple alone. I get it and I just go pick at it and squeeze at it and, and do all sorts of things. So, and I think that a pimple is, is the impurities in your body are coming out of, of that, that skin. So what is the first thing, obviously, is to start to detox. And then what is the next step after that to try and get your skin, to get all those lumps and bumps out of it? Okay, so Margaret, it depends on your age because invariably pimples, and no one likes to hear this, are caused from hormones. So um, or, um unclean skin so if you apply makeup and then go to bed and don't take it off apply more makeup go to bed apply more makeup of course your skin is going to become clogged and dirty from the outside but invariably most people suffer with pimples that are actually from the inside coming out and it's either teenage hormones so like let's talk about acne so acne is a really difficult condition to treat and um, it's actually a condition that you're born with. So it's something you have to maintain throughout your life. So when you get a pimple, yes, you do need to try not to attack it, but I promise you I do too. But um, you have to try to not also walk around with a giant pustule on your face. So my suggestion is to extract. But once you've extracted, apply a um, antiseptic serum or um, antibatroban even over it to stop surface bacteria from going in and making it worse. And you just have to unfortunately ride it out. The more you pick, the more you scratch, the worse it's gonna get. And you actually develop like a bed sore looking thing on your face. Yeah. So try not, to, try not to attack it once you've extracted the pus from it. Yeah. Now talk to us about all the Botox and fillers. I mean, I, I had fillers put in here because I had a big yeah. crease in my forehead. And okay. About two years ago, they're still there, and I've now got two lumps instead of one crease. So I, uh, I did do well with that with fillers. And with Botox, you can see mine has worn off now because my wrinkles are coming back. So yes, talk yes. to us about that. How old should you be? I know my daughter came in to me and she said, Mom, I've turned 40 now. It's about time I've got some Botox. I said, Oh, don't start because once you start, you actually can't stop. You know, you really can't. So, what is your advice to women? What age should okay. you start? A lot of people start too early. So um, actually, the company Allegan that own Botox suggests that you use it as a preventative rather than a cure. So you start it earlier on in life, and those wrinkles will not be able to form, which means long term, you're actually going to stop any wrinkles. So um, let's say you start doing Botox and you're able to do it for 10 years and then financially you're not able to do it anymore. People think that their faces are going to fall apart. In fact, for 10 years, you just slow down the aging process. So to be honest, I am pro if you can afford it and you're not becoming too obsessed and like creating body dysmorphia. I do suggest that you start earlier on in life because then that crease would never have formed. I also started a little bit later I started at 30. I mean, girls are starting it at 20. And I have got two little creases there. And, you know, if I'd started at 20, those wouldn't have been able to form. The other thing about Botox is people think that you're injecting a toxin into your face. And it is absolutely not that. It's actually a protein molecule derived from botulinum toxin. The most researched drug in the world, more is used on little cerebral palsy children. So it is 100% safe. Um, I do think that you can become a little bit obsessed and that's where there's, there are complications. Botox itself is completely safe. So I am pro.
And talk about fillers. Do fillers really work? You don't want to end up with lumps yeah. and bumps. Well, do they start yeah. moving around or whatever? <laughs> it's all about it's all about your doctor that you go to. Some are a little bit shady and are not doing the um, procedure correctly, and then you will form a lump there. But fillers take a while to actually absorb into the skin. So if you have some fillers done in this area here and you can still feel a lump after a few days, you can actually massage, like um, in your nasal labial lines, you can massage the lumps because it's just hyaluronic acid and it's just drawing moisture to the area. So even, uh, excuse me by doing this, but you can even do this and massage. And even in your lips, you can actually smooth out those lumps. Once the lump is formed, it's quite difficult to get rid of. And Botox and, and fillers last for a long time. Mm. So go to the right doctor and experienced doctor. Yeah, because I see even dentists are all doing it now. Wherever you go, they say Botox. But now, Kamala's coming. She said she's of Indian descent. She's 75 years old now. So Kamala, well done. Are we the same age, Mimi? And she's got terrible dark marks on her face, especially on her nose. And another problem is little white spots on her arms. So like you know there's something going on there how can you fix that or can you okay. fix it? well it's it's quite difficult because um indian skins fall so all skins from um, very light to very dark fall into a category of the amount of melanin now indian skins fit into the middle of the color chart and um for whatever reason and science we still don't know, Indian skins are the most prone to pigmentary disorders. And it's something that scientists are trying to work on constantly. The dark marks on the face can be treated, but first and foremost, pigmentation is treated at home before it's treated in clinic. Because once the pigmentation is stimulated in that area by the sun hormones or um, trauma to the skin, once it's set there, it's actually set in the brain. I know this is, sounds very far-fetched, but it really is. So in your adrenal glands is a little hormone called the melanin-stimulating hormone. And that hormone, once it's developed in the skin, is also developed in the brain, which means that you have to treat your skin constantly. So what she needs to do is go and see a skin therapist that can give her some home care products that reduce melanin. I call them melanin blockers just for ease because the name is quite complicated and they block the formation of melanin on a daily basis. As soon as you stop using them, the pigmentation will come back. Also Indian skin suffer a lot of the time with dark circles under their eyes. That is a very common hereditary problem. And um, often there's not a lot you can do to, about it because it's very close to the eyes and pigmentation treatments can be quite harsh. So my best thing for her would be to go and see a therapist and get herself onto a daily melanin blocker. I think that's super. And Stacey, if you could just put Ria's details there because yes. I, I think I'm going to do that anyway. And there you um, can go. Am I speaking a little bit? No, no you, you're speaking fine. You just, you froze for a bit, but you're absolutely fine now. Okay. Now, um, Glenda, oh, sorry. <laughs> of doing face yoga we were putting faces at each other all the time trying to get rid of those wrinkles do you think that'll help or do you think that's just a fantasy it just keeps us busy and keeps no. us out of mischief? <laughs> no, no i'm sorry there are lots of gimmicky things out there okay. um to be honest they're like the jade rollers and the rose quartz rollers they're yeah. lovely but they cost money and yeah. um, you can put them in the fridge to go under your eyes and to roll under your eyes. But to be honest, Margaret, a piece of eyes works exactly the same. Oh, yeah. So um, what I'm very pro, instead of doing face yoga, yeah. I believe very strongly in lymphatic drainage for the face because yeah. our body is made up of lymph. It's yeah. a whole lot of lymph um, vessels and lymph nodes. So like taking your oil at night over your moisturizer and yeah. massaging your skin towards your lymph nodes. Yeah. So you go, that is very good because you're increasing oxygenated blood to your skin and all the nutrients from those lovely smoothies you're eating will go straight to the skin. Oh, really? Now, what's the best thing to eat for skin? Because, you know, um, I, I'm at the moment, I'm having my green juice that we, uh, this new course well we do. Done. Juice every day. But what is the best thing to eat to make sure that you detox your skin as quickly as possible? Okay, so obviously fruits and vegetables and a variety of fruits and vegetables are crucial. Um, a lean protein or tofu is also good for the skin. But more importantly, your, obviously your nutrition is very important, but things to stay away from. 
And the one, the worst thing for your skin, okay, other than smoking, is mm. sugar. Sugar oh. is the mm. worst because mm. sugar causes a thing in the skin called glycation. Mm. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but, but glycation is basically the breaking down of your collagen structure and your elastin fibers. Sugar mm. directly breaks down collagen and elastin. So keep your sugar for the one piece of cake you have a month or the one chocolate you have a week. Because mm. I mean, look, human, we all crave sugar, but sugar is not good at all for the skin. The other thing in terms of nutrients for the skin, there are two nutrients that you should be taking for your skin. And I believe only two, because if you're eating all your greens, like you are right now, there's no need to take additionals, you know, over the top supplements. So I think an omega oil, specifically an omega-3, a fish oil, crucial as we're getting older, those omega oils go to the skin and help hydrate them. And the second thing is vitamin D, because you work, Stacey works, Jess works, I'm sure all the listeners work. So are we getting our 30 minutes direct sunlight today? No. So vitamin D3 is a crucial vitamin for the skin. So yeah, that's my advice in terms of nutrition. Be healthy, eat clean. Wow. Yeah, this is so interesting. Yeah, yeah, go but I'm so glad. <laughs> I just went onto your Instagram page and um, saw how you've got an image there where I'm guessing it's pigmentation, where you've got your yeah. before, during, and after. I'm actually just yeah. going to share at the moment. Um, sure. Shane, can you give me sharing powers? So. <laughs> And then we can look at the image um, just so that everyone can see how incredible the process is. And please, can you speak us through that process? What, what, what is that person doing that has enabled them to have that incredible change? Um, okay, I think it's pigmentation that you're talking about. Yeah, it's, uh, there's the three images um, on your Instagram yes. page. It's quite new. Um, okay. Yeah, and it shows peeling of the pigmentation. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. And okay. Like freckles, okay. like pigmentation and freckles. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, freckles and moles are all caused by the sun. So a client will say, no, I was born with this mole. No, you're born with birthmarks. You're not born with moles. Moles are from the sun. So um, other than time itself, the sun is the most okay. aging. You all see that. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That okay. is the one. That's the one. Okay, so other than time itself, um, the sun is the most aging thing that you can do to your skin. And we, we need the sunlight. So tan your body a little bit, but never tan your face. Wear a sunblock every single day of your life. So that particular client had um, freckles all over her face. So she had sun-induced pigmentation, which is probably the easiest pigmentation to treat. Very, very hard to treat hormonal pigmentation because our hormones are coming and going all the time through areas of our life. Um, teenagers, pregnancy, perimenopausal, menopause, and thereafter. So that particular client had sun damage. So before that treatment, that is a DMK treatment. It's called remodeling procedure. It's a very, very strong peel, quite an invasive peel. It's six layers and burns. I've had it three times. Burns like there's no tomorrow, but I will do anything for nice skin. So, you know, it is what it is. So, um, she had to, prior to that treatment, go on to retinol for two weeks to strengthen her skin. I, I also want to talk a little bit about vitamins after this. So to strengthen her skin. So with vitamin A, it causes the skin to become stronger and to tolerate more things. So her skin was strong enough to tolerate that peel. We put the peel on. She goes home with the peel on, sleeps with it on and washes her face the next day. And over five to seven days, your face sheds like a snake, like literally. I had like hanging skin over my lip where I had to actually cut it like that because you can't peel the skin off. It's not ready to come off. You've got to allow it to shed. It is a really hectic peel. It's actually one of the strongest in salon peels in the world. Our DMK comes from the States. So um, then after that, literally everything is gone and you have this amazing flawless skin actually says I think one of your friends is coming to me to do it so the problem is though is if you are not using a melanin blocker at home that pigmentation will gradually come back because why pigmentation wow. is now developed in the brain 
So, you know, look, um, unfortunately for long-term anti-aging, well, anti-aging in terms of looking after your skin, you have to use decent products. Um, just buying something from the grocery store is, is not going to cut it. There's nothing in there that can penetrate legally. It can't penetrate. So we want our ingredients to penetrate. And that's why going for prescriptive skincare products from your salon, um, your aesthetics clinics and your salons, that's where you need to go and get your skincare products from. Spend a what little bit more. Suggest? Yeah, what would you suggest? That was a remarkable product. question. There's so many makes out there. Where do you start? So you many. Know, like Clarence and L'Oreal, but you say don't go buy those because they're at the shop and they just two weeks go through. And well, them. well, they, they, I mean, look, rather use those instead of nothing. But for me, because I've been using retinol on my face for so long, my skin can really tolerate strong ingredients. Like um, I can put pure retinoic acid onto my skin and not break out at all, not purge. So I believe as you get older, go stronger in ingredients. We have amazing brands here. And I'll, I'll name a few. Obviously, DMK, because um, it's one of my babies, and Environ, also one of my babies. Um, there's Mesostetics, incredible brand. There's Optify, there's Vologa. There are some really good brands out there. So it's about you finding your therapist, connecting with them, and if they will be knowledgeable, they'll be able to tell you what ingredients are in there. I studied cosmetic science. So my clients will take a photo of the ingredients of a product they bought and send it to me. And I'll say, you know what? This isn't a bad product. The vitamin C that they're using is L is um, ascorbic acid, but it's not the strongest vitamin C. And they'll be like, well, where can I get that from? Well, these are the brands that use those strong ones. And they're the most expensive and they are the most um, the strongest and the most, uh, the best uh, results from them. Sure, amazing. Yeah, and what would you what suggest as a good skincare routine, even? I mean, so many of us think okay. we know what we're doing, and then we hear okay. like, oh no, we should be adding that or putting sunscreen, like you said. Okay, so right now I'm not going to talk about teenage skin because teenage skin is pouring oil, literally, where you can almost smell it. I have two teenage girls. Um, suffering with the most horrific blackheads, acne. And so teenage skin, I'm not going to talk about right now because it's a whole nother skincare routine. But from, let's talk, uh, Jess, how old are you? 33. Okay. So I've got this thing from 35. 35, the wrinkles come hard and fast. So from 35. <laughs> I know, they're coming. I've got time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So from 35, you change your cleanser from a cleansing gel to a cleansing cream. Unless it's a cleansing gel, like a special cleansing gel from Dermalogica, or Environ do a SEBI wash, which have got no nasties in them. By that, I mean sodium lauryl sulfate, which is stripping the skin. Because as you get older, your natural skin oil, which is your sebum, you want to keep as long, on your, as, long as, as you can on your face. So you know that's a thing that we learned when we were younger. You need to cleanse, tone, and moisturize twice a day. Okay, that is a marketing gimmick that is made by the skincare companies to get people to use more products. No. In the morning, you wake up from 35, unless you still have dripping oil, like my husband, beautiful skin. Anyway, uh, unless you have dripping oil, you change to a cleansing cream because the emulsifiers in those creams will keep your skin hydrated. Why are you cleansing twice a day? What is the last thing you're doing at night? Cleansing, maybe toning. You don't have to tone every day serums loading up on serums and moisturizers and even uh, skin oils now during winter so in the morning wash with water apply your serums apply your moisturizer and apply your spf even in winter even if you're working in your house because every house has windows and uvb rays go straight through windows so sunblock on your face is crucially important then go mad with your day more makeup and whatever. Then at night, you cleanse. Again, from 35, use a cleansing cream. I also swear by those makeup remover face cloths. I love mine. Um, you can get them from anywhere. They're amazing. Very, very soft fabric. So I wash, I cleanse with my cleansing cream. I use my makeup remover face cloth because it's environmentally friendly. So I'm not using 100 cotton pads. And um, do not use facial wipes. <laughs> Those are not necessary. Just use your makeup remover face wash. You wipe, 
wash it, it lasts for a year. So it's also more um, economical. And then I put on a smorgasbord of serums at night. So I actually cocktail my serums. I go vitamin C, retinol, niacinamide, or a, I use a whole lot, apply them to my skin, wait a few minutes, apply my moisturizer, and then possibly a mask over if I'm asleep, going to bed, or a skin oil. I love skin oils. Wow. Thanks. Yeah. That's so, so interesting. If you're going out to buy a skin oil, what kind of skin oil do we buy? <laughs> well, um, so I use my, my DMK one is um, a, a herbal pigment oil, which I love. And in Byron, do one called an ACNE oil. But um, actually, I think you can buy a rosehip oil from Dischem. Rosehip is amazing. I know Soil, the essential oil brand, also do a rosehip oil, which is divine. So, um, or you can use avocado. Yeah, avocado oil comes, I think Alpha Farm do it, <laughs> comes in a little bottle at the pharmacy. But also, um, whatever brand you're using, they should have a skin oil. Um, I actually apply my skin oil to my moisturizer and then I apply it. I just see now, Kamala said she stops using sunscreen as her eyes burn. I know that I did that in this, I was in the States now on the beach and I thought I'll just spray my whole face. I do to the kids, you know, come here, let me spray your face. Boy, did my eyes burn the whole day. Um, I, I tried not to get it in my eyes, but it just sort of ran into my eyes. So that's the one thing with sunscreen. I do find that it does burn your eyes. I agree. Uh, sunscreen do burn, um, like the Environ Red. If you get that in your eyes, it feels like you're going blind. So um, what I would suggest, remember, because product does move on your face, I would keep the sunscreen further away from your eyes. And during the course of the day, because of obviously the warmth of our skin, the products will move slightly. And um, as long as you're keeping it further away from your eyes, they shouldn't get to your eyes. Another thing is, um, you, like you said, Margaret, maybe using a spray and um, just keeping your eyes closed and making sure that the spray is properly dry before you open your eyes. Um, yeah, so, but unfortunately, sunscreen is really, really important. And the sunscreen in your moisturizer often is not enough. You need to apply more. So, yeah, just find one that you find is obviously non eye burny. Okay, now let's go back to peels. I'm a great believer in peels because I think, you know, but I, I used yeah. to have the basic peels that where the skin actually peeled off your face. Now I do a much softer peel, which doesn't, you know, because I'm at work all the time. Mm. And you know, once my staff member came to me, yeah. and said, so she absolutely said, from your friend, but you've got skin coming off your face. And I thought, I don't want that at work. So I have a lighter peel now that doesn't make the skin all come off your face, but it does definitely yeah. get a tiny upper bit jar. What do you feel about those? Yeah. 100%. I'm all for peeling. In fact, if a client doesn't ever want to do Botox or skin needling, then a course of peels is the way to go. So yes, those ones where your whole face shed are not necessary. I would maybe do one a year of those and in between do lighter peels. So you can do alpha hydroxy peels, which are milder. So you've got your glycolic and lactic acids. Um, you can do, you can actually buy uh, peeling products and do them at home. Um, Environ have peels that you can do at home. And um, often the peels in your night cream or in your serums that help to get rid of the dead skin cells. So I'm all for peeling love pills now tell us about that micro needling I, I it sounds sore i had it it wasn't a bit sore yeah so tell me what do you think about that yeah, micro needling is amazing because we're puncturing holes going down deep into our dermis. And what it's actually doing is each of those little needles are kind of, it sounds terrible, but stressing out and causing inflammation to your fibroblast cells. So those are specialized cells in your dermis and they are the factory for collagen and elastin. So what I really like about, uh, about microneedling is that you are causing inflammation to your skin and then your skin is naturally healing itself. So you're not necessarily using over the top products. So it is qu quite affordable. I don't charge a lot to do a course of microneedling because I, I want my clients to do it. And while I'm needling, I also use serums that go into the skin and then I occlude with the um, healing gel and they go home. And the next day they can go to work with their um, makeup on, but it's scientifically proven that small amounts with um, not too deep needling can actually tighten your skin. 
It's an awful it. needle. So talk to us about now microdermabrasion. That used to be the thing where you actually went and they literally sandpapered your face. Now that's all yeah. gone. That's, that's old fashioned now. No, because times have changed along with research. So there's a thing called the skin's microbiome, which is like, you know, when we talk about the health of our gut, because in our gut, we have little, um, little live bacteria, that bacteria, funguses, and viruses that live in our gut, but that are healthy. Our skin has the exact same thing. So we have healthy little insects living on our skin. I know it sounds a little bit gross, but it's the truth. So um, what we wanting to do is maintain that healthy microbiome by ensuring that the skin's barrier is not impaired. When the skin's barrier becomes impaired, like over peeling and stripping your skin with over cleansing, like washing your face three times a day with um, a face wash, and that's got sodium lauryl sulfate in it. You're stripping your skin of all the healthy microbiomes that make up the healthy skin. So as soon as you start stripping them, what starts happening to the skin? Reactive skin, sensitivity, even rosacea, because rosacea is caused by a dermadex mite. And the dermadex mite grows stronger as soon as your healthy microbiome is removed. So therefore, dermablading, microdermabrading are just stripping the skin of its natural microbiome and taking too much of the healthy skin barrier off, which I'm completely against. Skin needs to be treated holistically. We need to take care of it. We, we need to stop over cleansing and over toning. Now talk to us about laser. There's so many lasers out today. How do you know which laser to, to, to do it, to, to have on your face? Okay, so there are different lasers for different purposes. Um, Margaret, I am all for lasers, but a laser is a once-off thing. I am more about treating your skin at home with your skins with a good home care regime. So, um, for example, when you've got severe pigmentation, you can go for a treatment like Limelight, and you will see instant results. But remember, I told you where pigmentation is formed in the brain. The limelight is not doing anything for your adrenal glands. It's, it's treating the current pigmentation. So yes, for a once-off, absolutely. But make sure you use your products from home. Um, and uh, sorry, what, sorry, I'm a bit ADHD. What was the question again? <laughs> oh, lasers, lasers. Okay. Who's got what? Yes. There really are so many. There's LED, there's um, uh, uh, Vivachi, there is, there's so many lasers out there. A lot of them are designed for skin tightening that also do something similar to needling that affect the um, fibroblast cells that do tighten. Personally, I would, for skin, for some kind of laser, I would only go to a dermatologist. And the only one I personally would have is Fraxel because it is the most effective treatment ever developed. But you've got to be prepared for some downtime. Fraxel is the only one. Now, there are some things we know about. What's the new stuff coming through that we don't know about? Yeah, well, <laughs> there's new things every day. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what the new laser companies are going to bring out. Who knows? But, I mean, um, I know, like, now um, – uh, Omnilux have just brought out a home laser LED. So the red light LED actually does stimulate collagen. So you can pop it on, pop on the machine and, you know, go for it. So you don't necessarily have to go into the clinic, but those ones are not as strong as the in-clinic LEDs. You even get little facial um, handheld LEDs. I have one that you just go over your skin with the red light LED for a few minutes to stimulate natural collagen. I've also got a home um, microcurrent machine, which um, stimulates muscle contractions. So you kind of feel your muscles going to tighten your facial muscles. So they're all those kind of things to use at home, but those are also offered in clinic. And remember, as we get older, our, our muscles start to atrophy. So to shock your muscles a little bit with the with the phoretic charger is not a bad idea because you're strengthening your facial muscles. So for so, older yeah. women like myself, sorry, I, I, <laughs> for older women like myself, what would you suggest? Would you go for laser? Would you go for lightning? Would you go for 
for what? Or just an ordinary facial? So you're getting, oh, just have a facial once a month. And okay. Well. So depending on your facialist, if she is a dermal therapist and she is using a strong prescriptive um, skincare product like, um, like I said, DMK, mesostetics, and mesostetics do an amazing cosmelian peel. Um, so I would go for in salon peels. Uh, that would be what I would do. Um, I would, if you can afford it, 100% go for Botox, without a doubt, because the confidence that Botox gives you is life-changing, really. It's, and it's not a drug to harm people. It's to make women feel better about themselves. I would definitely do fillers. I've done a bit of lip fillers myself. I do a little bit of fillers on the side here because I do, my contours are dropping. I'm 45, so they are going to start dropping. Um, I would also at a later stage do a little bit in my cheeks to lift them. But again, if I can afford it and without being too obsessed, I wouldn't go for gimmicky laser treatments to just a, a, a random laser clinic, to be honest. Jess, what were you going to say? Your turn now. I've been holding <laughs> um, Yeah, thanks. Uh, Pia, so you mentioned a dermatologist. My question was, what's the difference between a dermatologist and a somatologist? And when do we know who to go to? Okay, such a good question, because there's such great confusion. So I, I see a lot of patients who have had acne, so they've been on Roaccutane, or they've gone to have some little fibromas. You know, our skin, unfortunately, as we get older, start to grow little things all over them. Um, some are called senile warts. It's a terrible name. I know they're actually called acne keratoses. Um, you get fibromas growing on your skin tags. I'm sure you guys have experienced in the neck, under the arms, in the groin. Um, a lot of people develop them under their eyes. Um, we get uh, cherry onyomas, all these terrible things growing on our faces. So those can either be done with a dermal therapist like myself because I have a cautery machine. But if I don't know what it is, I will always refer the client to a dermatologist. So for example, my client had, it looked like the skin was bubbling out underneath her nose. And she said, oh, she wants me to burn it off. I said, I'm sorry, I don't know what it is. And I know a lot about skin growth. This I do not recognize. You have to go to the dermatologist. I phoned her a week later to check that she'd gone. Yes, she had, and it was cancerous. So dermatologists are not only GPs, they are specialists in their field. Just remember, though, that dermatologists study the anatomy of the skin and are brilliant at it, and they study medical drugs, and they are brilliant at that. Once your work is done at the dermatologist, you cannot carry on going them, going to them for now long-term skin. Now I want to have treatments. Now what products do I use? Because they don't study cosmetic science. So there is a big um, difference between the two of us. So they only know the products that are being sold to them by the pharmaceutical companies. And those companies are not the ones that are producing prescriptive skincare. And that is when the dermatologist will say, now it's time for you to go and see the skin therapist to hydrate the skin, heal the skin, work on the scarring, because dermatologists, that's not their field. Absolutely. Thanks, and yeah. oh, and <laughs> what about your neck? I mean, you know, everybody, as, as you get older, you get that horrible turkey neck. And because yes, I've got, yes. at the front, my, my chest is very burnt and I've got skin sun damage like you can't believe. Yeah, what yeah, me too. <laughs> what do you do about that? Um, so, Margaret, I think you and every single South African woman suffers with the same condition because we are fair-skinned people living in Africa. So it is what it is. The um, chest has more sebaceous glands than the neck. So the neck is going to age faster because our necks hardly have any natural oil. So peeling the neck and chest when you go for your treatments is crucially important. Needling your neck. So when I do needling, I tell my clients, full face and neck, whether you like it or not. And they're like, oh, but my neck's so reactive. Yeah, it's reactive because you're not taking your product all the way down there. So come on, let's do your neck as well. So those are things you can do. You could also do home rolling for yourself. You know, a, a home derma roller, roll your neck, apply your serums, apply your moisturizers. That will help to tighten the neck. Look again, um, I'm all for Botox. I'm all for um, fillers. I'm all for plastic surgery. I'm going to do it one day. Christo, just I hope you're listening. Um, you know, so you could go to um, a, a plastic surgeon and just get your neck tightened a little bit. It is an area where we are going to age. Sorry, I saw someone asked a question about natural skin care. Do you mind if I answer that? Mm. Please. Okay. 
That's so, um, so I'm all for natural skincare. Lovely to um, apply a natural products to your skin. However, when you are aging, natural is just not going to cut it anymore. When you are aging, you need ingredients that are formulated in a laboratory to help your skin to age as best possible. For example, you do get a natural form of retinol. Rosehip oil is actually one of them. And another one is beta carotene. But retinol, which has been formulated in a lab, is the be all and end all of skincare. If you want to age well, you need to be using topical retinol. So natural skincare is lovely, but wait till you see the lines coming hard and fast and your face starting to sag then you're going to rethink, okay, maybe I should start using something a little bit stronger. So good. Stacey, something from you? Oh, no, I'm just like, I mean, I talk to Pia all the time and still I need <laughs> to learn bucket loads. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, I, at the end of my day, I'm so often tired and I think, oh, you know, I don't feel like it, but I need yeah. to get over that and I need to yeah. just you know, push through the, the not feeling like it and do it. I agree. I agree because you're a working mum and you have four children. <laughs> okay. I have two and I can barely cope. So um, what, and this is where things, gimmicky things, and I'm going to go on, I'm going to talk about gimmick just now, but like those face makeup remover face cloths, wet that, wipe it over your face, throw it in the wash, take all your skincare products and cocktail them. So do your serum, serum, moisturizer, lather it, and go to bed. At least you're getting it onto your skin. In the bottle, it's not going to help your skin. Yeah, amen. Yeah. I said those cloths are, and for any of you girls watching who haven't tried that makeup removal cloths, they are amazing. I know I got mine yeah. from, when I had my makeover, I got them from Megan and Faith, Image Insured and Westful, and it was just Oh, amazing. yes, they're they lovely. I think they sell them there. Yeah, they do, yes. And my hair yes. sells them as well. But you can get them, obviously, at just came and clicks and that type of thing. Just came well. clicks and take a lot. You can order them anywhere. They really it's are amazing. You put all the makeup off and, and you, you're not scrubbing and scrubbing. Especially I wear long uh, lipstick, which sticks to everything. <laughs> and then they really okay. get it as well. It's amazing. It really gets it all. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, carry on. Oh, sorry, Margaret. Something else I wanted to suggest to clients is things not to do for your skin. Mm -hmm. okay so the one the most important one that I couldn't actually say more about is never scrub your face with a granular scrub faces aren't designed for granules um you know early man probably would have used a bit of mud and applied it to their face and left it there and washed it off but scrubs are incredibly unhealthy. So people are using apricot kernel scrubs, which basically when it gets crushed, are pointy, sharp little objects that are tearing your skin while you're scrubbing. So the person's going, oh, my skin feels so soft afterwards. Yes, of course it's gonna be soft because there's hardly anything left. But the other reason is because the scratching of those little um, granular fibers are causing little gaps in your skin that will cause your skin to literally pour out water all night long. All it's going to do is increase something called transepidermal water loss. Now we are trying to lock moisture into our skin and by scrubbing, you're literally just pouring it all out. So that's the one thing. The other thing I see they called fromators. These like little scrubbing brushes for your face, even a silicone pad that is not designed for your face. Use it on your elbows, your knees, your heels, not your precious face. So for us going forward now, where do we start? So obviously we come to you and retinol, I know that's the only one that I really know, Optify I know of as well. Um, yeah, very you, good. We come to you and we say, and would you consult over the phone? Because I mean, I'm in Joburg, I can't get to charity. So would yes. you consult you online and say, this is what I need. And you look at our face and say, look, you know, Margaret, you're arguing with old and wrinkled and I suggest you do this and this and this. How does that actually work? Yeah, so um, with my clients, uh, because I use a giant magnifying lamp and look over the skin and I almost use like what I call facial braille is I feel their skin and that is really important for me to feel the texture. However, what I do is I'll do a one on one on uh, uh, either on Connectable Life or I'll do it on WhatsApp and I'll be like, right, you need to go outside. I need to see your skin properly. 
And because to do it in a dark room like this, you're not getting an accurate calculation um, on, you know, the client's skin. Once I've looked at their skin, then I ask them to send me a photo of what they're using. If I don't know the brand, I ask them to send me a photo of the ingredients. And I'm not all about my product. I'll be like, actually, this one, it's, a, it's by the standard, which is a local brand. These are really nice ingredients. Carry on using that. This one here, waste of time, chuck, or use on your body. Um, actually, this weekend, um, I did a facial consultation on a lady that was using five different cleansers. I was like, why? What are you actually doing? I don't know. I can't stop buying stuff. I said, stop. Just stop right there. This one. This, let's look at the ingredients. That's the only one. Use the rest on your body. Just calm down. <laughs> so you don't yeah. have to use 40,000 products. <laughs> I think a lot of people spend a lot on cheap um, makeup and, and cosmetics for their face. Yeah. Instead of getting one decent, you look at it, and I know that I looked at the one and it was like a thousand rand for this little bottle, and I thought, wow, that's a lot. But then when I looked in my cupboard, I probably had five thousand rands worth of, of stuff that I wasn't using. Exactly. But then it says, exactly. The face cloth that's been discussed. It literally is called the makeup remover cloth. It looks like a face cloth, but it's special that you just put cold water on it, you wipe your face, and all your makeup comes off. It is amazing. I love it because I always used to get soap in my eyes, and my eyes are very sensitive. So you literally take all yeah. your makeup without any soap or any cleanser or any anything. And it, you find yeah. it, it's with cameras and clicks, it's all over. You'll see some makeup remover cloth, comes in a little bag, and you just wash it every day. I stick it in my, my towels, wash it, and use it the next day. It is amazing. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, it's name. made. Yeah. Yeah, it's made with a microfiber fabric. So it's not toweling. So don't use your toweling face cloth. That is not going to be the same. It's a little bit rough on the skin. Soft fiber. It really is divine. It's worth the investment. And they're like not a hundred rand or so. They're not expensive. Well, this has been the most amazing chat. Stacey, just to wrap up from you on your side. Yeah, thank you so much, Pia. This has been incredible. It's a, a question I that I would like to, I, I loved us. It. It's been amazing. Thank you. A question yeah. I've also got is, you know, like Dove uh, body cream or, you know, one of those over-the-counter body creams. What would you suggest yeah. with that? Um, so uh, anyone that's nice and moisturizing. So um, I use the either the Nivea or the... Um, Oh, I can't think of the other one. But anyone is, is going to be pretty good for your body. <laughs> um, and Byron do a vitamin A body cream, but it's quite expensive. So um, I, I just use um, a, a slightly cheaper one and I'll put a few drops of my Environ vitamin A, C and E oil in and I'll lather it on my body. And I do scrub my body, but from my decollete just above your boobs up to there, never scrub. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Good and to know. Thank you. Been, you know, I went through, through a stage one of skin brushing to brush all the old skin off. But that's oh, yes. well, it's not sustainable. You can't do it forever and ever. Amen. But I do do it from time to time when I remember. <laughs> Margaret, that is incredibly good for you. In fact, skin brushing is one of the best forms of lymphatic drainage. So for um, anyone who's suffering with um, edema or water retention on the legs, Brushing upwards, always brush up towards your heart. Brush over your thighs, brush over your bum. It's very good for you. It's finding the time. Yeah, it, is, it really is. And uh, Jess, a wrap up from you. Yes, thanks so much, Pierre. It's been, I've just been sitting listening. Yes, it's all just so fascinating. But I think the biggest sort of standout for me is that it can be a very overwhelming process. And I think that's why it's so important to find somebody to, you know, I didn't know a skin analysis was even a thing. I did the try this one, that one, everyone. And you do, you end up spending more money trying all the cheaper brands and figuring out what's working, what's not working. And I actually had um, a skin analysis with Pia and it was extremely helpful. And now I know what type of skin yeah. I have, what it needs versus trying to figure it all out yourselves because it can be very, very overwhelming. So see someone, figure out your skin type rather than guess it and um, know what you need to use and sort of yeah, stick with that plan. It always helps to have a, a partner with anything so yeah. and thanks and have knows, put peers details on on here and jace did it through connectable life so please feel free to contact her yeah. i was Absolutely. actually out Anytime. for breakfast and hopped in my car <laughs> for the <laughs> consultation yeah, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah your um, your final words to the ladies sitting out there with the hanging down mouths and the brickly faces and everything um what's your final um story to them my suggestion is spend a little bit of money on yourself. 
We spend our lives raising our children, looking after our husbands, uh, running a household, and we always come last. And if you can, put a little bit of money away every month. Even if you go three times a year to a professional for a skin treatment, you will never, ever regret that. Absolutely. And I always say to ladies, you spend so much on your clothes. You spend thousands on your dresses and your shoes and this and that. But what about your pork face? How much have you spent on that? So please give your face a little love and care this, this month. Absolutely. And please, details are there. Go and see her if you can. Otherwise, do a, a consultation through Connectable Life and make sure that your face is the best face you put out there. Thank you so much, ladies, for being on today. Thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, Margaret. Thanks, Thanks, Pia. Thanks Margaret. Thanks, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye, ladies. Next yes. week, Margaret, we have oh, uh, Jane Killian, a self-love coach. Okay, self-love, amazing, amazing. I just said I'm doing this course now with Kelly Dell, and she said the hardest thing that we found with the Mrs. South Africa is to look in the mirror and say, I love you to yourself. And that's so really, really important. A lot of people don't love themselves, and they wonder why nobody else loves them. So, yes, yeah. uh, yes. Us next week at 9 o'clock. And game. that is actually something that Jane teaches us. She goes yes. through the whole process of learning to love yourself and speaking it over your life, starting oh, with yeah. one little thing and then building up from there. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank, Thank you, Pia. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, ladies. Bye. 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 Bye.